So here I am on Globomantics ADFS Server 1. My little notification area tells me that I did successfully install ADFS, but I haven't yet run the configuration wizard that lives in the ADFS management snap-in. So I'll go ahead and click that link. That's going to launch my ADFS MMC GUI. In which I'm going to click the link to launch the ADFS Federation Server Configuration Wizard. We've got two main options here. One is to launch a new ADFS server that is operating kind of as a standalone server. We're building a new ADFS environment for the first time and we're rolling out our first lowly server. Alternatively, we might be in the process of building a server farm, a collection of ADFS servers in a network load balancing cluster to be able to field a large quantity of traffic coming across the network from our partner organization. In this case, they're a small organization. They're a staff of a half a dozen people. They've got deep pockets, but they've got a lean staff, so I'm not expecting lots of incoming requests. So we'll assume that a single ADFS server will be adequate here. So I will start by creating a new standalone federation server. It's all by its lonesome. I'll choose standalone here to say this will be my first and last server for this environment. I'd have to start all over if I decided later that I wanted to add other servers. Alternatively, I could say I want to build a new federation server farm, and I'll need multiple federation servers uh, over a period of time. In this case, for simplicity's sake, and because this is a small network environment, uh, I'm going to use the standalone scenario. Next important question is which SSL certificate am I going to use to get my work done? We're passing secure data about authentication details across quite probably the internet. Not always the case, but in, in a number of cases. You may recall that I called the guys who run the Cisco routers down the hall and they set up a VPN between the routers. So I don't need to worry too much about secure transmission of that data, but nonetheless, ADFS is going to rely upon SSL, Secure Sockets Layer, to encrypt communication with the ADFS server. ADFS, you may recall, gets its job done using web services. It's exposing functionality by way of IIS, the web server. And the right way to secure communication traveling to a web server, to and from a web server, is with SSL. The same technology you use to be able to secure your communication with an e-commerce site that you purchase things from, uh, or the bank where you transfer balances and things of that sort. And you'll note that at the moment, there's no certificate that the system recognizes as a valid SSL certificate for this purpose. So let me bail out of my wizard here. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Let me go launch the certificate snap-in. I'm going to launch the MMC, Microsoft Management Console. Into it, I'm going to go add the certificates snap-in. As I do, I want to use it to manage certificates for the computer account for this computer. Looks good. Click OK. There we are. As I open this up, I see the list of logical certificate containers, the collections for different kinds of certificate uses. Ultimately, we're looking to deploy a personal certificate, one that's specific to this computer and describes itself in some fashion. But specifically, I want to make sure that we're deploying our certificate in such a way that it's treated as a server authentication certificate, one that's able to allow this server to prove its identity to some client that wants to connect to it. I want to supply the public key of this certificate to clients so that they can send messages that only this server can unencrypt. I want to send secure transmissions to this server. We're resting on PKI again, public key infrastructure. Encrypt with the public key, decrypt with the private key. So how do I make it perfectly clear that what I'm creating is a certificate that's going to be used for server authentication purposes? So what I like to do is this. I'm going to go right click my personal container here and change the view from logical certificate stores to certificate purpose. In which case, our view of those certificate containers changes to show the set of certificates that fall into one of a long list of different kinds of certificates that I might potentially use. The one that's relevant for us here is server authentication. I want a certificate that allows this server to prove its identity to somebody else. So I'm going to go right click that container and request a new certificate. Now I've already called the CA manager to ask, uh, ask her to set up the web server certificate. The web server certificate, so called, uh, essentially deploys the server authentication template. So we need to make sure that the web server template has been configured uh, so that this computer can enroll for it. Remember that's going to be done by configuring permissions. If I'm going over your head here, go back and revisit our lesson on certificate deployment 
and management of certificate authorities. That'll fill in some gaps for you there. So we can see here that the CA administrator deployed the web server template. So I'll check that. It needs more information about me to be able to enroll me for this certificate. So I'll go ahead and click that link. And it wants some information to identify me, the consumer of this particular certificate, which is to say this computer. Well, how am I going to describe myself as a computer? Our main orthodox way of doing that is the common name. Common name, for practical purposes, is the DNS resolvable name of this computer, which in this case is Globomantics adfs1.globomantics.local. I could alternatively supply something called a subject alternative name, uh, some other piece of data to help identify that object as well. In this case, it's not strictly speaking necessary. I like to supply the DNS information, which is essentially going to be the same piece of data, but we're making it clear that this is a DNS resolvable name. That done, I'm going to click OK, click Enroll, and this computer has been enrolled for a certificate, which is to say, I've got it. If I look at the list of server authentication certs, I can see a certificate called GLB ADFS1, issued to me from the CA running at Hyper-V Host 1. It's a CA that I deployed on the actual Hyper-V Host computer that's providing access to this virtual machine. I'm going to go look at the details of that certificate by right-clicking it and choosing to open it. I can see that this certificate does deploy the certificate template called Web Server. It exposes the server authentication usage. It uses a subject name of Globomantics adfs1.globomantics.local. Is that a valid certificate? It says it's OK. That certificate got its information from the Globomantics CA. That CA is a trusted CA. We're in good shape. So that means when I go back to my ADFS configuration wizard, we won't trip over the need for a certificate because there is now an SSL certificate on this server. We're going to imagine that on the other side of the network, our counterparts at Cash Cow Capital Group are setting up the exact same type of a configuration. And this time we can see that we do have an SSL certificate at our disposal. We are intending to expose it by way of port 443. I can go view that cert and everything looks fine. All that done, I'm going to click Next. It's telling me what's going to happen next. It's going to stop the ADFS server service. It's going to build an instance of Windows Internal Database. Again, that's effectively SQL Server Express Edition. It's going to generate internally certificates for token encryption and signing. One of the key goals of the use of our ADFS server is to validate the data being passed from one ADFS server to the other. The use of certificates is an important part of that. Some of them are used internally. Others, the communication is going to rest again upon that SSL certificate that we just set up. The others are usually internally generated certs, and that usually works just fine for most purposes. Next, it's going to take my SSL certificate and apply it to our IIS environment. Remember that the ADFS functionality is exposed by way of a web service. It's an application running at the IIS server. The SSL cert is going to encrypt and secure the communication to that web application. We're then going to give a user account access to the ADFS database to get that set up properly. We'll configure a set of what are called endpoints. I'll define that idea in a bit. Let's hold off on that thought for just the moment. We'll post a website at our local IIS server slash ADFS slash LS. Uh, this is going to be our connection point into authenticating into ADFS. It identifies the name of my Federation Services environment and we prepare to start the ADFS server. Let me go ahead and click Next, and off it goes.